All right. Beetle Baby. Beetle Baby, a McLang fan fiction. Uh, let's read the summary real quick, quickly. Request, can you do a fic where Paul is pregnant and is going into labor? Oh, God. A rating and C-17. <laughs> Sex, bad language, and male pregnancy. Mm. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Timeline. Oh, wait, we have a context to this. Around 1962 and 1963, oh, pairing McLennan, I wouldn't want it any other way. Notes the condition Paul has is not real, it's completely made. What? You mean Mpreg is fake? <laughs> What? We wouldn't want the children to read this and have, like, people above 17 to have the impression that oh. it's real. God. Oh, chapter one, his choice. Mm. <laughs> okay, 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 let's, let's see how we're gonna do this. I'll do Paul's voice, you'll yeah. do John's voice, and I feel like you should read the whole thing, basically. Okay. It's just more humorous than me, yeah. because I already know what's going on. Oh, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck. John pushed himself hard and heavy with full force. His body varying tension as he slammed into his lover's bum. <laughs> <laughs> varying tension <laughs> into his lover's bum. What, how does Paul's voice sound again? Oh, oh, bleeding. Oh, <laughs> Paul's oh, body almost oh. bounced up and down on the bed due yeah. to the amount of force John was putting. <laughs> he was tense and had been begging for John to slow down for ages, but orgasm made John deaf. His spine almost curled at the ecstasy, feeling closer and closer to his climax. Can I? No. Please, <laughs> he moaned as he pleaded. This was a common topic of fights. Paul never let jo John come inside him with the excuse that he thought it would feel weird. And John always wanted to. The one on top slowed down his thrusts. But in order to tease the one below, he made them deeper and stronger. They really earn this NC-17 <laughs> rating. This could kill someone. Paul could feel the amazing pressure on his hips as George slammed in. George! John slammed in. <laughs> it's all the same now. <laughs> John slammed in. He fought back as much as he could, trying to compensate the amazing feeling by wanking his <laughs> cock harder. But soon his orgasm got the best of him. This is really lewd. His body felt an urgency, a need for more pressure. <laughs> more of John's dick inside of him, making him almost howl out. Oh, <laughs> eat up and come in me. It didn't take John a second before sped up <laughs> and using the best angle he could to give Paul pressure. Angel. Is it? Angel. angel? Shit. <laughs> using the best angel he could to give Paul pressure and soon coming undone inside Paul, filling him with his warm, sticky semen. <laughs> this is great. Oh, yeah. Warning. The condition Paul has is not real. What? No, go up. You missed. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Their bodies fell next to each other, breathing heavily from their synced orgasms. So, John began, still very out of breath. Was that bad? Paul wanted to hold his pride. He felt the tone of gloating in John's voice. He wanted to play hard to get, but fuck, it was too good. <laughs> Amazing. The raw, the rawness of th oh. the warmth that was inside him oh. was something so dirty oh. and purely sexual that it made every hair in his body spike. 
<laughs> John opened up a glowing smile as he pulled the sheets over their bodies, cuddling next to Paul. Oh, what a sweet ending to such Ron. <laughs> yeah. Many days and nights passed. They just, they just stay exactly like that yeah. for a week. Yes. All perfectly normal till one morning, John is woken up by a disgusting sound of vomiting. I wouldn't want coming. some pleasant sound of vomiting. <laughs> By <laughs> disgusting sound of vomiting coming from the bathroom, he turns on the bed. Oh yeah. He turns the bed on. Yeah. Forwards, turns... forwards where Paul would be to find his lover was gone. Oh no. He sat up, itching his eyes before calling out in a sleepy tone. Itching. Paulie. <laughs> There was silence for a few seconds before the bathroom door opened just a few inches and, low on it, appeared Paul's whitened out face. Yeah. He managed to say, before burping and having to crawl quickly back to the toilet to vomit. You need to tell me he was on all fours. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. John cursed as he pulled out, uh, out of, as he jumped out of the bed, rushing to his lover's aid. He opened the door, finding Paul almost throw on the tile ground <laughs> near the toilet. <laughs> His body looked weak and tired, just lying there. Paul lifted his head and looked up as John came in. His eyes were just as worn out as his body, making John grow worried. What happened, son? John knelt down next to Paul, <laughs> helping him sit up a bit. I don't. He impulsively burped and rushed to the toilet, <laughs> emptying what was in his stomach into the toilet. John did get a bit nauseous from the smell and sight, but he kept it back, staying by Paul's side, brushing his hair back in a sweet way. No, 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 not in a mean way. No, no, no. no, no. The young beetle's sick body was tense, but as John's almost delicate fingers ran through his fringe, his shoulders slowly fell back. His stomach settled a bit as he sat back. Oh, oh, it's me. I'm sorry. Bleed and howl. <laughs> More like vomited, John joked as he grabbed a piece of toilet paper and cleaned Paul's lips. Mm. His eyes were focused on his work. Not noticing that a pair of ha light hazel green eyes were focused on him. The owner of the hazel green eyes didn't say anything, but his lips curled slightly, making John notice his Im observer. Feeling better, eh, son? John smiled lightly. A little bit. No, okay. Paul breathed. Paul <laughs> breathed a little bit deeper as he took his hand out. Oh, help me up. Keep his shit <laughs> John did so, taking Paul to their bed. You still don't look so well, John commented as he brought the glass of water he had on his bedside table to Paul's lips, <laughs> helping him have a drink. Always has a glass <clears throat> of water nearby. Mm -hmm. You better stay in. I'll tell Brian to cancel today's show. Cancel? He'll kill me, said Paul a bit loudly, <laughs> soon regretting it as his stomach began to rubble. <laughs> <laughs> you can't perform like this, son. You'll end up making a meh. You'll end up making the first seats of Splash Zone. Eventually, after a bit of a little bit of disgusting, <laughs> <laughs> John goes over to Brian's room and tells him what's happening. He can't even speak without getting sick, Brian. Come on, be a mate. John begged to the manager, <laughs> who paced back and forth in the small office. Wait, wait, I just realized Brian's room is like right next yeah, to his Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Fine, John, but only if he agrees to see the doctor. John nodded, taking one of Brian's cigarettes and lighting it on his lips. Mm. Thanks, Eppy. John smiled as he walked back to his and Paul's suite. Paul was, again, with his head stuck in the toilet. <laughs> John! He called as he heard the door. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, love. We have the day off and Brian is calling the doctor. But days and days passed, forming a week, and Paul was still sick. His body ached. His was always vomiting and had started developing strange sensibility to smells. <laughs> he can smell now. 
Oh, he couldn't smell it before. No. For instance, John could not wear his favourite perfume without Paul immediately getting nauseous and ending up vomiting. I always get nauseous around John, to be honest. During the show, he would sweat five times <laughs> as much as he used to, and his moods had gotten worse than ever. All his moods. Oh, it's, it's just... is this me? No, it's just the telly. It's not even loud. I don't care. It's bleeding, irritating me. I'm trying to write a song. Eventually, he goes to the hospital, meeting his good old doctor, Robert. <laughs> so, so, what's the reason for this visit, Mr. McCartney? I love that the doctor and John have the exact same voice. No, they don't. The doctor <laughs> said with a smile, making Paul grin as he responded. Mr. McCartney is my father. Call me Paul. Paul said charmingly. The thing is, I've been having really bad nausea, and my body has been aching a lot. After doing the <laughs> usual checking of vital size and responses, the doctor decided to give Paul's stomach a feel. As he moved his hand around Paul's belly as he massaged his way around the tissue. <laughs> Weirdly, the doctor stopped in his tracks, feeling just one spot over and over again as he made a confused face. Oh, <laughs> I, I keep I keep getting so zoned out. S something wrong? Paul asked as he lifted his head off his arm that served as a pillow behind his head. <laughs> Nothing to worry. <laughs> Nothing to worry. <laughs> the doctor lied as he walked walked to the intercom and called the nurse. Everything has to worry. Yeah, we'll just have to get you an ultrasound to check a bit better. A young nurse soon came in, wheeling in front of her the ultrasound machine that they had in 1963. <laughs> Paul lied back with his shirt and pants oh, open, no. giving the doctor a full view of, this, of his stomach. It'll be a little bit cold. <laughs> the doctor warned him before putting the freezing cold ultrasound gel on his belly and beginning to move the small receptor on Paul's skin. Initially, the doctor seemed normal and simply attentive, listening to Paul's heartbeat echoed in the machine. But as a second sound appeared, the doctor widened his eyes. <laughs> the sound was stronger than Paul's own heartbeat, but sound just the same. Feeling the doctor tension, Paul lifted, off, <laughs> lifted his head off the bed and looked at the screen to find a weirdly shaped mass on the screen. Uh, doctor! <laughs> he spoke scared. Yes? Was all the doctor murmured as he looked at the screen with wide eyes. Oh, what the bleeding hell is that? Paul lifted his eyebrow as he spoke, managing to keep still so the doctor would lose the image. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor took a big, a deep breath and saved the image, trying to rationalize this whole situation. You could sit up, Paul. Oh, I thought he already did. The young beetle did as he was told to look. As he was told... What? Wait. Did as he was told I as looked, looked at the, the doctor, doctor waiting for an answer. Oh, so... you got to stop that, <laughs> Nina. It's a bad I habit. Refuse. The doctor sat down on his desk, looking at the image on the monitor of the computer that they had in 1963. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you a very important question and ask that you will answer me with the truth, Paul. No matter what the answer is, remember that I will not tell anyone. You are my patient. Uh, come off and say it already. Nini doing that thing. <laughs> Paul's body almost shook, scared of what the doctor was going to ask, and he didn't. And, and when he did, it didn't help at all. Have you ever had... Have you ever have queer unprotected... No, have you have? Oh, have you have queer unprotected intercourse in the past week or so? Paul's oh, eyes grew true. wide and cheeks flushed to a deep red. His mind screamed for him to lie, to protect his manliness and ego, but reason spoke louder. Yeah. Well, that explains it. The doctor put his palms together under his chin as he thought... You were born with a rare condition that basically gave you an anal uterus. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I've got this womb up my ass. Oh yeah. I told you this was all homophobic. Don't have sex, you'll get pregnant with quadruplets. Paul looked at him with arched eyebrows and an open mouth. Speak English, Robert! You're pregnant. Paul laughed at first, but seeing the doctor's seriousness, he closed his smile and re-arched his brow. You're joking, right? I wish I was, he said, running his hands over his old face and through <laughs> his grey hair. That mass is a weak old baby, and that sound. He stood up and placed the receiver in Paul's stomach, showing the strange echoed heartbeat in the so in the ultrasound. In 1963. Mm -hmm. Your heartbeat is doubled because it's not just your heartbeat. Paul stared at the monitor, his mouth open in utter shock. I know this is strange, but it is happening, Paul. You need to abort it. Just as the doctor said the horrible words, Paul's face twisted in anger. What did you say? Paul, it's a difficult pregnancy and it's completely unnatural. The doctor sto showed his true opinion as he made a disgusted look. Fuck it, it's my fucking baby and I'm not killing it. Paul stood up rashly, beginning to button up his shirt. <laughs> Paul, listen to me. You are famous and successful. This baby could not only end that, but end you as well. The doctor was shaken by the... Uh, Paul was shaken by the doctor's statement. His, <laughs> the doctor was shaken by the doctor's statement. <laughs> his mind imagined his career being ended, the band falling apart, and John leaving him. He sucked in a strong breath as he kept his tears back. Can I get a copy of that picture? He asked coldly with his back to the doctor. The picture of the ultrasound in 1963. Yeah, the doctor noticed his effect on Paul and gave in, standing up, printing it out and giving Paul a small square paper with a copy of the image in the screen of the ultrasound. It's for your own good, the abortion. The doctor spoke as he handed the beetle the picture. I'll choose that. <laughs> I'm glad that this this fan fiction is pro-choice. Mm. Okay, let's not let's stop reading that now. Yeah, Paul. <coughs> doctor's like Paul. Do you really want to shit out this baby? Paul's it's like, probably gonna kill you. Paul's like fuck yeah, so I can spite you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm mad at you now, so I'm gonna have this also, baby. Also, that sex scene at the beginning is very necessary for us to yeah. understand. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> on to on. <laughs>